Hello everyone, this is That's Enough Glue, and today we're looking at the full package of a Kenmore 158.16011. With this model, you'll have a complete case, manual, case with 10 bobbins, and the Tower of Power, and an additional Tower of Power. Inside the extended Tower of Power, you will find a full complement of fresh needles separated out according to size, a replacement needle plate for the Kenmore, straight stitch foot feet A through D, a needle threader, replacement spool pin, and two options of replacement spool pin pads, and the original screwdrivers. Continuing on, this set has been expanded to include the attachments series, which includes a stiletto, zipper foot, quilt guide, stitch guide, narrow hemmer, edge stitcher, binding stitcher, gathering foot, applique foot, you just name it, <laughs> cutting guide. The original 1601 kit came like this with a throat plate for a button holder the necessary cams. These are buttonhole cams and a buttonhole arm. In addition to the standard set and the extended set, a further extended set was created based on stitch samples I made using other cams that are available for the Kenmore 158 series of the late 1960s. All of these tam cams have been tested on the machine and their individual stitch uh, samples can be found with the machine. In addition to the machine, you will have a manual for the 1601 series and 10 fresh bobbins in a vintage case. Attachment detail cards 1 through 10 are included as well as a back of an original Kenmore needle to give you a description of which needles for which size and material. The machine itself is in a sturdy carrying case with side latches. Top handle and hidden on the inside is a bed extension plate. Opening it up, you'll find the Kenmore 1601 1. This machine has currently been polished, oiled, cleaned. Uh, the full complement of spool pin protectors are already on there, a, a needle plate, and all it needs to be done is to be run. Before we go on and get running, I wanna describe a couple of differences on the 1601 line that is different than the 1701 and the 1802 line. While what is the same is they still use the C style cams, the same needles, thread spools, um, the body looks generally the same, the mechanics are also very similar. The major differences come in with the number of built in stitches, as well as a tricky difference that is presented here. This needle plate and throat plate is actually a different size on the 1601 than it is on the 1701 and the 1802. It has a narrower feed dog and it has a wider notched plate. So 1802 parts for this area will largely not fit. Now, if you put in a monogram or, or buttonhole plate into this machine, there will be a gap where this notch isn't, but it will actuate. Be aware you might lose pins or whatnot down to the base of the machine, but that is the large noticeable differences. Smaller differences is because the speed dog is smaller, it's narrower. Being narrower, you have a narrower zigzag width. Although on both, actually all three of the machines, they'll go from straight to four, it isn't 
the same actual millimeter value. This is the narrowest of about four to five millimeters of full zigzag. One of the other differences you'll see in these machines is that in the 1601-1 and some other late model 1802s, instead of the small, medium, and large adjustment for the patterns and the stitch cams uh, being separated like this, they'll be, they'll be closer together. That closer together pattern, you'll see on the 1601-0, actually correlates to a different mechanic on the inside for adjusting and holding the stitch, the stitch cam spacing. Uh, but largely it doesn't impact any sewing functionality. Things that you'll find the same between all three of the machines I've mentioned are they all come with bells and bob minor feed drop, light, same indicators. Uh, this has fewer stitches as like I said, built-in stitches. Still have the pr uh, presser foot pressure. All of that's the same. Uh, it's basically the same machine on the inside, with the exception of the cam built-in cam stack, which correlates to this being shorter in this model, and uh, any of the mechanics around and down and near the feed dog are a narrower margin. This includes going into this area, the width construction and control that goes with the stitch width and the stitch length is slightly smaller to keep it more mechanically controlled. Well, that is the 1601-1. Let's get this going. The interesting things to know about this model Kenmore is instead of a low shank or high shank, but it uses a super high shank or super high bar uh, centered foot. It will have a similar look to the slant shanks of a singer, but it is actually a little bit higher and taller. One of the things I like about a lot of these Kenmores is instead of an independent screw, you actually have this little lever here that you tighten the foot on. You put put in that drop tight. It will now not move on you for anything. The needles install very simply with the small screwdriver to the needle screw. These flatbed machines have a removable throat plate which reveals the inner bobbin ex assembly access point. This is where you'll have to brush out lint or whatnot or grab the bobbin holder for your sewing. One of the things you'll find if you follow my blog or if you're interested in buying any of my machines is that I am absolutely in love with the Kenmore needle threader. This is a, it comes with the machine. It came with the machine originally. It allows you to thread the needle without really having to put your eyes deep into the machine. You loop it around with that and pull it through and it's threaded. No real keen eyesight needed. It's a lot of feel and it's a lot of good work. The light switch is just a push button and it lights up. I've installed an LED light, but it will also come with the original incandescent if the LED is a bit too harsh for your eyesight. Here I have a strip of apparel denim that I've just rolled over on itself and we're going to test it out. When looking at this, this front looks really good and the back, well, besides catching itself, uh, is pretty consistent and even stitches. Another thing I want to mention is about actually how high the foot actually rises. So one of these cases is just thinner than a quarter of an inch and you can put it under with just a generic lift, pretty okay regular left. You know, it doesn't lift very high, but give it a little tug, quarter inch just fine. Now, so this is just shy of a half of an inch and 
with the super high lift. There we go. Now I can't say it'll sew <laughs> through a half of inch of dense fiber, but if you're working with a fleece that's got a lot of loft to it or um, anything that in the fiber is gonna break, is gonna push down, you're gonna do fine with a, about a half of inch of a super high lift. I've layered 10 layers of fashion apparel denim. You'll see that it comes really close to the foot even when it's already rose. But the nice thing about this machine is it has a super high lift. So I can put it in that and then drop it down to make sure I've got the foot pressure. Remember to adjust the foot pressure appropriately for how many layers of fabric you have. Um, with the exception of tension issues, uh, that, that was due to me, it went through with no issue. Now I'm going to work another zigzag stitch, taking care not to get the ends, the free ends, caught up in the underneath. So let's take for a walk. Whoops. It has a nice little thread cutter on the top of it. So besides the fact I got this piece caught in there, which was my mistake, that looks pretty sharp. And again, I've got some tension issues I need to adjust, but besides it goes through, once you get your bobbin tension the right, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. My final thoughts on this machine is it is a powerhouse. I absolutely love it. So we went through these, and this is about a quarter inch of material, especially when it's packed down. Um, with that, the zigzag is about two millimeters wide, so that roughly correlates to the zigzag uh, stitch width. And it just, it really works. I've, I've mucked around with this a bit, pulled on the layers. Everything is really happy. Now, I've done some more advanced cams on it, like the Swan Cam. I believe this is... A cam in the 30s um, it came out really nice except for my tension errors uh, like honestly a lot of this has been a learning experience for me about getting the tension right it's not a difficult machine to get the tension right I was just a novice when I started working with this now it works with wonderful and button holders again you need to make sure your tensions right that's, I can't stress that enough. A lot of modern machines give you a lot more leeway and tension. This machine doesn't, but once you dial it in, it is good to go, honestly. Now, this is apparel denim. It's fashion apparel and denim. It's pretty thick. It doesn't have lycra in it, but it is, um, it's not like a Carhartt denim. Now, if you're doing a car heart, you might not be able to go through 10 layers, but about a quarter inch, maybe a little thicker, you probably can. I'm really impressed with this machine. I have hemmed countless pairs of jeans straight through the side seams um, with no problem on these machines. So please buy it, enjoy it. This is a beautiful beast and it just, it hums and it just it is a wonder to work with so i hope you enjoy the machine and happy buying <laughs>